So trauma uh, arises from an inescapable, stressful event that overwhelms a person's coping mechanisms. When it occurs in childhood, it harms the healthy development of a sense of self. There is literally no way that you can get out of trauma unscathed. It does not mean always that uh, a person who's experienced trauma will develop PTSD. That is not always the case. But the experience of trauma is one that has a lot of horrible consequences, which we'll go into. Okay, so we know trauma... This is, this is the definition of trauma. We know there's a lot of consequences, but let's look at what uh, different kinds of trauma we're gonna, we can uh, identify okay, with our clients. Okay, so acute trauma. Acute trauma is a single traumatic event limited in time. Okay, so if you were uh, working with a client who had a car accident when they were 12, um, that and that's it. That's the only thing that's happened. But now they have some issues with driving, or they're scared to go on the highway, or things like that. That probably would be the only way that that trauma, uh, that that person experienced trauma. Okay, and this is assuming that they didn't deal with any of that at the time. Um, in terms of dealing with some of the feelings that they had about the car accident. Uh, when we're dealing with a wounded child, this is, you're not going to see acute trauma, okay? Chronic trauma is repeated traumatic exposures over extended periods of time, okay? So we do know that some people who have uh, experienced some trauma in childhood um, or even in adolescence um, have chronic trauma, but Complex trauma is more of what we're talking about with regard to wounded inner child, okay? And complex trauma is a history of multiple chronic or prolonged exposure to traumatizing events from which there is no escape, okay? You, you cannot escape it. So that's the complex trauma. Now, this does occur in relationships that are abusive. So if you have a adult who gets into a relationship with a partner who is abusive towards them, either emotionally or physically or sexually or any of those kind of things, complex trauma can also occur. Most always, at least in my own experience as a clinician, the person who got into that relationship with a manipulative person or abuser or, or whoever it is already probably had complex trauma, okay? They just may not have realized it. But when I go back and I do my assessment of what are the things that have happened in their lifetime, most often they've experienced some level of complex trauma um, in childhood or in some kind of situation where they felt as though they could not ex escape, so we're going to, when we're talking about trauma with most of the wounded child stuff today, we're talking about complex trauma. So let's look at abuse um, because all trauma, I mean, sorry, all abuse creates trauma. Okay. That's not even up for debate. And when I talk to my clients, uh, I'm very direct with them about when they're sharing. I Now, somebody asked me in the last presentation whether um, if the, the person was coming in for the very first time and they told me about all the things that had happened in their childhood, would I just flat out say that's abuse? Probably not the first time, but very soon afterward, okay? Because in order to make some headway uh, in, in treating some of this, we have to be realistic about what it is. We can't um, sugarcoat it. This is very serious stuff. It does happen very frequently and we need to identify it. Um, that's the only way to help get past some, some of the denial. And of course, uh, you have to remember too, like I'm a therapist who works with personality disorder people and, and people struggling with addiction. So by sort of by definition, I'm a direct therapist and I'm, you know, uh, not going to sugarcoat a lot of things. Um, but I have not found that to be a, a negative thing. I found clients to be very appreciative of it, even if it does you know, raise some other uh, uncomfortable emotions associated with it. 
But the different kinds of trauma that I want to, uh, or abuse that I want to talk about today includes the emotional or the psychological, the neglect, the physical abuse, the sexual abuse, and the spiritual abuse. Um, it can be easy to make the mistake of believing that some forms of abuse are worse than others. Um, emotional and psychological abuse or neglect have the same devastating effects as any kind of physical or sexual violence or harm. Um, and when a child's sense of safety or attachment to a, a safe caregiver is threatened, that's going to affect, as we talked about, their emotional and psychological development and their ability to make sense of the world, to figure things out, to engage with learning, to develop good relationships. So this is one of the reasons why we want to um, make sure that we're paying attention to, um, in our assessment, what sorts of things they've gone through. So let's look at emotional and psychological abuse. Um, the reason I add these in here is not because I think you you all don't know what, what this looks like, because if you're clinicians, you do. But sometimes clients will tell us things and we don't necessarily uh, know how to describe it back to them um, or to identify it. So I, I like to include some of this in, uh, you know, educate, psychoeducationally about what abuse actually looks like. So emotional and psychological abuse can include things like criticizing and humiliating and shaming, um, name calling, blaming or scapegoating, um, obviously threatening, silencing or stonewalling, um, shouting, sarcasm, uh, inappropriate exposure to things that are upsetting, uh, witnessing abuse or, or drug taking in front of a child, uh, manipulating them, bullying them, gaslighting them, um, accusing them falsely of doing things, uh, controlling them, intimidating them, or forcing a child to perform degra degrading acts. Uh, unfortunately, all of this does happen. And, you know, we need to uh, be sure that we ask these questions when, because uh, a client isn't necessarily going to be able to identify all of these things if you ask them. Um, you know, were you ever emotionally or physical, uh, sorry, psychologically abused, which I'm sure everybody has in, in their questionnaire or their self assessment? Uh, nine times out of 10, they say no. Um, and I take it with a grain of salt because I'm like, well, they probably don't know what that actually looks like. And so once we start talking about it, that's when some of that starts to come out. Like, oh, yeah, well, my mom, when I was growing up, uh, if she got mad at me, she wouldn't talk to me for a week. OK, well, that's emotional and psychological abuse. That's stonewalling. OK, that, that's inappropriate. And it's abusive towards a child. So if your mom did that to you then we need to look at that as potentially being a wound, okay? Uh, neglect, uh, obviously physical neglect, which is failing to provide basic needs, shelter, food, clothing, um, also includes insufficient supervision and protection, leaving your kid alone unattended for hours at a time, uh, or insufficient attention to care and hygiene, um, and again, some of this does not necessarily mean uh, the person's doing it on purpose. You know, like I think about clients that I've seen um, over the years who had to work and left their kids overnight unattended. Um, it, regardless of whether or not the intention was to harm, it still harms. So, uh, you know, that, that's something that even though that, that's very difficult, especially when you're working with clients who may have been the quote, perpetrator of that, you know, it's important to be able to identify and discuss and hopefully resolve. Um, emotional neglect, which includes the ignoring or overlooking, being absent, failing to promote uh, well-being or development, failing to praise or express positive feelings, those kind of things. Uh, educational, failing to ensure appropriate learning and or schooling, uh, that means, you know, you don't require your kid to go to school um, and or you ask the child to stay home to take care of the other kids and don't go to school. Um, that's neglect and it can cause trauma. Um, and then medical, failing to provide for, a health, uh, for the health needs of the child. Mm -hmm.